اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ رب فر ورحم وانت خیر الرحیمین لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹلمن ا ویری وارم ویلکم ٹو ایوری باڈی ہوز ٹیون ان ٹو پی ٹی ول اینڈ ار واچنگ ورلڈ دس مارننگ الونگ سائیڈ دی ویری امیزنگ دی ویری اسپیشل شیزا ہاشمی اینڈ شاہزاد خان ہیلو شیزا ہاؤ ار یو ڈوئنگ ٹوڈے اینڈ ہاؤ از یور رمضان گوئنگ سو فار گوئنگ گریٹ تھینک یو سو مچ فار اسکنگ اینڈ تھینک یو سو مچ فار ٹرانسمیٹنگ دیٹ کائنڈ اف انرجی ٹو می ایز ویل ارلی ان دی مارننگ اسپیشلی وین یو ار فاسٹنگ رمضان مبارک ٹو ایوری ون واچنگ ان مور دین 40 کنٹریز آل اراؤنڈ دی ورلڈ ایز ویل اینڈ اسپیشلی دی مسلمز ہو ار ابزرونگ رمضان کریم ایز ویل سو ہاؤ از یور فاسٹ گوئنگ اینڈ ڈو یو فیل لائک دیز difference in well your routine in ramadan and otherwise as well yes obviously there's there's quite a lot of difference and ladies and gentlemen ramadan mubarak from all of us obviously as she's said as well and we definitely hope and pray that everybody's looking after themselves and uh, these are very testing times and i think that we are blessed to have the holy month of ramadan in yeah. between uh, us and those testing times as well and True. i think that everybody will be able to uh, kind of surf the wave as well so this is what we pray for but other than that yes i think that uh, Uh, f- for us and uh, for all of those Asians who are, who are Muslims as well, I think that it is a very jubilant uh, way of observing. Uh, and I think that this is the best way as well. You know, you wake up at Sahur and you are uh, sitting down with your parents. Everybody's half asleep and, you know, <laughs> you know your hair is not very well done <laughs> and, you know, you're still out there. So I think that it's very interesting. And uh, then at the same time, I think obviously to get used to of the very feeling that you're fasting, uh is a very different feeling as well thankfully you know we had this saturday and sunday to ourselves yeah. as well uh where our first of ramadan was on the saturday and then second was on the sunday as well so <laughs> i think pretty much people got this opportunity to you know kind of get acquainted yeah. uh to ramadan as well and and the very feel of it uh, you know because ladies and gentlemen to be very honest i think for all of those people who were fasting on the first of ramadan they had to go through quite a lot because they never knew that okay you know this is how long it's going to take but then at the same time when you know that the fruit which you are going to bear after this uh, is going to be something which will bless you in this world and here after as well so that's great but i think she's i've got a very important question for you and that is that you recently just got married alhamdulillah and now you know uh, since you're a wife so you have to look after the household as well so what wh- what's the kind of things you're making in iftar you know because i really need to know it and it's very confusing you know usually my mom is asking me okay putter kya bana le and i'm like oh, ma jo banta hai wo bana le but then mm. at the same time for you i think it might be a little confusing yeah okay so here's the thing of course it is confusing because i feel like this is a universal answer from all the men in the world like you said when we ask you what you want to eat and you're like whatever and it's so confusing because then you don't know what to make anyway for yeah. aftari i've been going with the typical pakore and some of and table stuff yeah other than that well i'm open to ideas and all of you watching if you do have some tips and ideas for me please do write to us yeah i'll give you <laughs> so an that idea that be you know uh, because whenever my mom's going to ask me okay beta what do you want to eat so we like whatever you you're comfortable in, uh, in cooking and there's a reason why we say whatever and it's because of the fact that the next person who's actually going to make us food is fasting herself as well or himself as well so you know why should you be putting them hmm. under pressure i that's think nice. that whatever uh, is convenient for you people i think that's what we really need to do right that's brilliant thank you so much for being so considerate as well but ladies and gentlemen this is the first ashra of ramadan yes. for all those who don't know about ramadan there are three ashras consisting of 10 days each the last may vary and the first one happens to be of mercy of rahmat and this is where you seek forgiveness for of course there every other day you have to seek forgiveness but this specifically we seek mercy from your creator as well and the prayer for this ashra shahzad already said early, earlier in the show too but ladies and gentlemen when we talk about fasting it's not just the physical fast shahzad it's not just the fast of the body as well where yes. you know you're not eating or putting anything inside your stomach as well while this may be the physical fast outside this is actually a true representation of the fast of the soul or the spirit that you're doing as well because mm-hmm. that is the true test right shahzad exactly what to do what not to do to sort of refrain from the wrong doings and the wrong thoughts that also come into your mind as well but this is the discussion that we are going to definitely uh, have of course in detail too but before that i think we have an amazing amazing nath prepared for you yes. guys from this amazing nath khwan over here in the studio as well <coughs> yeah and before we get started and ladies and gentlemen before we move on to our nath khwan there's this one more thing and that is that this entire month of ramadan all you have to do is to reflect hmm. and uh, i think that it is very important you know keeping yourselves hungry and not drinking water is not just for yourselves as well i think that this is that time where you realize that there might be so many people out there who might not have had food or a single exactly. drop of water you don't know for how many days so i think that it's all about realization as well it's all about patience as well it's all about control as well 
and uh, ladies and gentlemen i think that everybody out there is very happy and it's because of the fact that i'm actually going to ask for forgiveness every single day and that's what i'm doing and uh, ladies and gentlemen for all of those people who are not going to take advantage of this holy month i think are the people who will be left behind as well so please make ones. sure while you're given the opportunity of experiencing and having ramadan in your life please make sure that you take full advantage of it but very quickly ladies and gentlemen before we move on to our nath kaun we definitely have a religious scholar over here in our show he's going to be with us uh, throughout this week and we'll be discussing some very important and core issues ladies and gentlemen uh, he's one of our very lovelies as well he's none other than mr imran sandhu hello sir assalamu alaikum good morning wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you very much absolutely perfect and it's wonderful to have you over here in the studios once again along said mr imran sandhu ladies and gentlemen we are very lucky that we've actually been joined by sir i'm um, a very amazing nath khwa and i think that the day cannot actually start without listening to a nath as well he's none other than mohammad nakash khadri assalam alaikum good morning how are you wa alaikum assalam i am fine thank you very much for joining us uh, whatever you have to share with us please let's do it मुझे भी मदीने बुला मेरे मौला करम की तजल्ली दिखा मेरे मौला बहुत बेकरारी के आलम में हूँ मैं मेरी बेकरारी मिटा मेरे मोला सुना है मदीना करम ही करम रखता जहाँ में सभी का भरम है तुझे वासिता तेरे प्यारे नबी का मेरी अब तो बिगड़ी बना मेरे मौला मुझे भी मदीने बुला मेरे मौला करम की तजल्ली दिखा मेरे मौला जिसे तूने चाहा मैं उस पे फिदा हूँ मैं तेरे मोहम्मद के दर का गदा हूँ तुझे वास्ता से यदे कर बला का मुझे हर बला से बचा मेरे मौला मुझे भी मदीने बुला मेरे मौला करम की तजल्ली दिखा मेरे मौला बहुत बेकरारी के आलम में हूँ मैं मेरी बेकरारी मिठा मेरे मौला Beautiful so and I think that this is the perfect way to start your day as well, ladies and gentlemen. Even though that our day started with suhoor and the fajr prayer as well, but now very quickly coming back to uh, Mr. Imran Sandhu sir, sir uh, once again a very warm welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. There's just one simple thing which I wanted to ask, and then we'll definitely move on to asking about patience and the concept of sabr as well. And that is that they say that if you missed uh, one fast, 
even if you keep another 60 afterwards, even if you feed 60 other people, that the kind of blessings you'll be getting if you've kept that fast will be far more greater than what you've done later on to cover from it. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Um, uh, you know, the, uh, the timing is important. Yeah. When any uh, duty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes uh, towards you, uh, at, a, at a particular time, when you fulfill that duty on that time, uh, there's nothing like that. There's no substitute for that. Uh, of course, legally or, um, you know, you can cope up with by, you know, keeping that fast later on. But the substance that you, f you know, you get, the substance and the fruit that you get by keeping the fast on that very time when it was obligatory on you, uh, that cannot be compensated. Wow, and and that's beautiful. So thank you very much for saying that. And ladies and gentlemen, the sole purpose of asking this question is to make sure that people realize that for all of those fasts which you're actually missing on these days, God forbid, if you are, uh, you can definitely do that in winters too as well. But yeah, the, the fruit which you will get will be very different from because there's a majority of people, there are a lot of people who are doing it when they're actually supposed to be. So yeah, you cannot definitely yeah, get that fruit as well. don't miss it deliberately, of course, yes. even if, you know, there are some things, probably if you're not feeling well or ill, that is totally okay. That is even granted to you by your God as well. Yeah. But now, Santu Saab, uh, talking about the first ashra itself, talking about mercy itself, please let us know the significance of this, the theme of this ashra, first of all. Um, the theme of this ashra actually uh, denote, den denotes uh, the the mercifulness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. Uh, the Ramzan itself is a is the month in, uh, in which the Quran has been revealed. Yeah. Quran yes. uh, is the book of guidance for whole of the mankind. Hmm. So it guides the mankind to what the Creator wants us to do. So starting with the first ashra, it means that you know because this. Uh, 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 it can you can correlate with it that you know it gives uh, an opportunity for whole of the Muslim Ummah hmm. to enter into the door uh, to open the door of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the gifts that you get is that you know in Ramadan if you do a voluntary uh, ibadah uh, an, a nafal, nafal yes. it, it it is rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as if you have, uh, you know, practiced a fard or an oh, obligatory wow. act. And, uh, you know, if you, uh, when you, uh, um, you know, do an obligatory act, a fard or a wajib, it is rewarded as if you have done 70 times of, uh, it, 70 times in that time, like the reward is 70 times multiplied to, okay. to, the, to a normal, you know, uh, fard. Uh, but you know what is the uh, the more important question is what is the objective uh, what is the maqsad of ramadan i was yeah. about to ask that so uh, in quran allah taala allah subhanahu wa taala says says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam kama kutiba ala uh, alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun that uh, i have actually uh, you know uh, written upon you the siyam as i have written it before you in the on the previ previous ummas of musa alayhi salam of isa alayhi salam and all the ummas that have that came before us so that you can be god conscious hmm. now the question is the word that arabic word that comes is taqwa right. yes. normally people would understand from the loves taqwa in urdu um, that you know somebody with a beard, somebody going to mosque, um, saying five times prayers. Or, of course, that is also taqwa. Yeah. I, we do not <coughs> refute that. That is also taqwa. You know, uh, like dressing up like a molana. Right. So, but the thing is, taqwa is actually something uh, much bigger on the canvas. Canvas. Okay. Uh, consider, you know, a child that goes. Uh, to a school and he gets a training over there, a tarbiyah, the education over there. So he would start understanding how to behave in front of, you know, the teachers, the, the parents, in the society, you know, going how to go and drive when, you know, when you go out and you drive, 
you take care of the laws, all these things. Nowadays, for example, you know, when this pandemic is all yeah. around, yes. uh, what is the, what is the, uh, you know, actual, um, you know, uh, thing that a muttaki person would do? He would always try to be so careful so that he does not become uh, a ca carrier of the pa pandemic. Yeah. and you know hurt others exactly. so taqwa is basically an attitude it's a name of an attitude that you do not uh, you, you, you do what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do at a particular time in a particular environment right okay so, so for a better understanding of what taqwa is can we say that uh, taqwa is contentment the taqwa is to have this sense of fulfillment even if you do not have a lot is that what we is do you think that we can consider that taqwa as I well? would say it's consciousness it's consciousness okay uh, the, the best word that i could find in this language english language is consciousness okay. like you are conscious of the fact where you are who are who you are whom you are meeting with what is your role in the society yeah. right and the things that you will do will have consequences and the type of consequences that you th that they will have actually also depend on the decision that you make you very rightly said that but with taqwa you cannot have consequences no but there always will you? be consequences i think that i think that this that is a question know? to okay. be asked so can you have consequences if you are a uh, if you're a Mutaki person who person. yeah if you're muttaqi definitely it is going to have consequences in this Good world ones maybe. Yeah. in this world as well as in uh, you know the the, hereafter. the world hereafter yes taqwa will have its consequences as hazrat umar said that uh, you know uh, he asked someone that what is taqwa somebody asked hazrat umar what is taqwa he said that you ha you are walking on a path where there, there, there are, uh, you know, plants thorns. with thorns yes, yes, yes. Mm. and you have to save yourself uh, and, you know, walk in a way that your uh, clothes and yourself are safe from it. So, taqwa is basically consciousness from those thorns, All right. mm. you know. So, this, and this uh, life is full of tests and examinations. Right, absolutely. Why? <laughs> That's a simple question. Why? What? But, but yeah. Sandhu you know, you very rightly mentioned about taqwa. You know, generally, of course, our religion teaches us to be muttaqi throughout the year, not only in this month as well. But specifically in Ramzan, when That's we talk about, you know, observing fast, not eating, let's say, or not cursing, or not being loud to someone, not fighting with someone, or not looking at someone with a bad eye or anything. That is the true form of taqwa that people should be doing throughout the year as well. Yeah. But we forget to, unfortunately. How can we actually maintain this attitude of taqwa? Well, like you said, throughout our lives. Ramzan, Beautiful question. Uh, a very good question, a pertinent question, I would say. Ramzan is actually a month um, that actually forbids you to stop doing things that are normally not forbidden in the, in, uh, in the other 11 months, right? Okay. Like you are allowed to eat in other 11 months, yep. you are not allowed to eat over here, yeah. right? And there are other things as well. Uh, so, you know, this is how God consciousness comes into, in, in, into your personality in this month. That, be, you know, you are all alone at home. You are feeling thirsty. You have stopped just because there is a le red light. Yeah. Re right? Similar red lights you see everywhere, every time, all the time, in all of the year. Yes. Mm. Right? So... This is a practice session. This is a practice session of what you have to do whole of your life. Right. Ramadan is actually a sample of whole of your life. Hmm, like uh, Allah's order has come in Ramadan that you would not eat from dust to dawn. Hmm. Yeah. Dust hmm. to dawn, right? So uh, now you are not dawn. eating uh, dawn right. to dust. Yeah. Right. So you are not eating the reason being because Allah said. Yeah. So this is the same attitude would uh, should follow up or sh should be carried forward for forwarded into the next months, right? If Allah says that you have to pray at a particular time, then the order comes like a red light comes and then you have to pray. Similarly, uh, these are these amal of, you know, apparent nature. But mm. then there are amal of, you know, hidden nature as well, the, 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 the amals, amal related to soul, your heart, your mind. Uh, so, you know, uh, normally people would, uh, uh, you know, keep fast, hmm. start praying, but they would not stop yeah. other things that are prohibited even in non-Ramadan. Like For hasad, example, like gossiping. Like, goss like yeah. hasad, like jealousy, know, backbiting, yeah. jealousy. 
um, all these kinds of you know uh, uh, the personality traits, the negative personality traits. So, if something is forbidden in non Ramadan, hmm. it should be it should uh, you know we should practice it uh, uh, you know in, in the, the Ramadan uh, in th in this one month and then carry it forward to for the next 11 months as well. Right. This yes. is taqwa. And, and, right. and it's beautiful as well ladies and gentlemen because you know the research says that if you keep on doing one particular thing for 40 days it becomes a habit and you know once it becomes a habit obviously it's hard to kill and if it's a good habit you do not have to kill it. But very quickly sir and I think that it's a question which I might have asked my Islamia teacher somewhere back in the school but I never got the opportunity because I wasn't a very brilliant Kid, why do you think Allah wants us to fast? Why do you think Allah wants us to pray? Uh, I mean, what does Allah want out of it? Again, uh, the wisdom behind it is taqwa. As yeah. I said, I, 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 um, I've answered this question before. The wisdom behind this uh, uh, so that you, you may become God conscious. So he wants you to be God conscious. And there are two things that Ramadan, in which you do in Ramadan. One is, and the and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. One is of course fasting and the, uh, the other is reading Quran more and more. Yeah. Hmm. And you know um, it's not a coincidence that the very first uh, you know the second surah of Quran after surah Fatiha uh, it also gives you the same message. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدَلِّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Here again the same message is repeated uh, as we start reading, uh, going into the Quran, yep. so, so that you know, this Quran gives guidance to those who are muttaqeen. Hmm. Again, you know, what is taqwa? God consciousness. Yeah. One might, like you, you find non-Muslims even, you know, getting guidance from from Quran, you know, and uh, you know, converting or reverting back to Islam. You know, the the reason being, uh, there is kind, there there is a sense of consciousness god consciousness is in every human being yeah. right of course it's the nature so whenever this taqwa enters into a heart of any any human being he would start understanding the guidance in, of quran as well so so it's more of a refreshal course for everybody that okay that this is you were supposed to do you might have gone some hair wired but now come back to me and you know a very just good word that yes it's a refresher course and it refreshes you, you, you not only physically but also intellectually yeah. exactly. and so as well as, as well. spiritually. All right, and we definitely want to build up on that. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Imran Sandhu is going to be with us throughout the week as well. So we'll definitely have some other topics as well. So we're starting with the very basics. I think yeah. that we'll talk about patience and all of this tomorrow as well. But there are a lot more other questions which people really need to figure out and they need a way around as well. Do you think that there can be anyone who claims that I'm a muttaki myself? And uh, do you think that people really need to believe in him? Can a muttaki himself or herself claim that I'm a muttaki? <laughs> well, uh, nobody can claim that. Uh, or they should. Like, of course, you know. I don't do any sin. I read the five prayers. I keep my mind on people. I keep my mind on people. All of that. All of that. All of that. All the human beings are mistake doers. So yeah, we to are all mistake doers. And khayru khattayin at tawwabun. Yeah. Uh, the best person among the mistake doer is a person who repents. Yeah. So, you know, taqwa is a very relative term, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and um, again, it, peeps, it, it starts when it is there, it is going to pinch you every now and then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you are, if you are going to utter something out of your tongue, if you have taqwa, it is going to come inside your mind that you should say this or not, yeah. right? Um, if you are doing an action, you are looking at some someone. You should understand how you how do you uh, you know give him a give him a look or her a look. You know this is should be also according to the Quran and the Sunnah. Exactly. So you know all these things. You dress. The dress also is part of the taqwa. You know, people say that, you know, dress has nothing to do with taqwa or our gaze has nothing to do with No, it is not like that. You know, everything is related to uh, the God consciousness because every, uh, you know, um, every, every second you pass in this, uh, in this universe, it is because, because Allah has given you a life, He has created you. 
and Allah says that I have not created human beings uh, but for worshipping me, yeah. recognizing me, Indeed. chanting my name, remembering me, you know. So, taqwa comes at every point in time. You are on the road and the signal is red, taqwa plays its role over there. Exactly. You know. So, almost in every walk of life. You, you see normally, you know, in uh, in places like that, ke camera ki aakh aapko dekh liya, the eye of camera is watching you. Exactly. So, when, uh, when real taqwa comes, comes in, there is no camera needed. Yeah. You know that Allah is watching all the time. Beautiful. And That's thank you very much for saying so that much. as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we wrap up the segment, we are actually going to ask Mr. Imran Sandhu as well, what will be we discussing tomorrow? So that people are ready and that if they have any questions related to that, we can they can obviously post it on our pages as well. What do you think we should discuss tomorrow? What are, how do we spend our day in, uh, uh, in Ramadan? In Ramadan. Oh, How that's do we? brilliant. You know, that is such actually a basic question, but everyone strives to find, look for the answer, right? How should a day in Ramadan be different than the other days as well? How should we actually be the muttaki person that we always aspire to be as well? Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much for the beautiful nat that you recited as well, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, from now on, we are definitely going to be identifying themes as well for this month yeah. and then be talking about it. And right, Shazad, uh, like Shazad said, if you have any questions, do post to us beforehand so that we can ask them in the next show as well. Exactly. Uh, stay tuned because in the next segment we are going to talk about. <coughs> well, we are going to talk about uh, how, uh, the, in the light of our religion and the teachings, you know, whatever teachings we've got from our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we can actually relate them with COVID-19 and th and such situation, ladies and gentlemen, has emerged even back then as well. So, uh, what do we need to do? And I think that this is something very important which we need to discuss, and that is since everybody's in quarantine, not many people know how to spend their day, and especially when you're fasting. What to do, what not to do is something which we'll be discussing tomorrow. But for now, we're going for a short break. But once you're going to come back, I've got one of my most favorite speakers over here in the studios. And he'll be telling us what to do in the times of pandemic and what teachings we have. And what did our prophet tell us? Let's do this. Good morning. Stay tuned. Dua for first 10 days of Ramadan, ever-living, everlasting Allah, I seek your blessing.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. For everybody who just got tuned in to PTV Wall, you watch it all this morning alongside Chiza Hashmi and Shahzad Khan. Earlier, ladies and gentlemen, we were in conversation with a religious scholar and we kind of have a lot of conversation about, you know, what Ramadan teaches us, what taqwa is and who a muttaqi is and how our life actually revolves around being a muttaqi. And I think that it was a fabulous <laughs> conversation. Tomorrow when we'll have him over, we'll actually, we are going to talk about what, how to utilize your time while you're fasting as well. That's brilliant. But not just that, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, uh, since we are actually uh, living in testing times and we keep on saying that as well, I think that in the light of Islam, we have a lot to learn and we have a lot to share. Absolutely, and Shusad, you know, especially when the number of cases in Pakistan keep rising such drastically that sometimes it's even hard to believe exactly. that it's so ha happening so fast. I mean, 13,328 reported cases so far. Just imagine, imagine the ones that are not reported or tested yet. I really hope all of us do remain safe as well. Yeah. But there are certain teachings that our religion has told us in terms of, you know, how to deal your, with your life in a pandemic, because this is not the first time the world is uh, sort of, you know, facing a pandemic yes. as well. So uh, just yesterday, I was in conversation with someone and uh, they actually, you know, sort of talked about a very important point. It actually enlightened me and made me think more about it, which is, is why it? I want to talk about it so that maybe you can and maybe our guests can answer it as well. You know how our religion tells us not to eat uh, something like an onion or something before you go to a mosque, right? Yeah. Just because for the mere inconvenience of your fellow that, of course, maybe you can and have a angels. bad breath. And angels. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I mean, it's such a beautiful religion. So if just because of that small, let's say, smell, your religion is telling you not to go to the mosque because of that, don't you think it's going to be easy if there's a pandemic? Don't you think that your religion will be flexible for you to like stay home and pray just for you to be safe and the people exactly. to be safe as well? What do you think about it? And more than you, I think we should ask our guests as yes, well. Yes, we they will. And ladies it. and gentlemen, it's a complete religion, uh, to be very honest. Not just that, from how we are actually supposed to dress ourselves, how we are supposed to wash ourselves. Exactly. Everything has been taught to us and it's in our Holy Book, Quran as well. And even our Prophet, Alhamdulillah, has actually made sure that he's going to do all of it because it became Sunnah and then everybody follows. Absolutely. And yes, we are getting uh, a lot of blessings for that as well. But ladies and gentlemen, very quickly, because uh, I think that this is something which is very pertinent and relevant in today's time and this is something we need to ask. Yeah. Once again, we're very lucky that we've actually been joined by somebody who has uh, rendered his services as a professor when I was in my university. I've loved him to the core. He's a marvelous speaker. He's a, he's a media sensation these days. He's <laughs> everywhere. He's not, it's, this, this was the start, I believe, oh, right. but he's on every other channel these days as well because he speaks very well and he makes sense as well. Ladies and gentlemen, he's an educationist himself. He's none other than Mr. Asif Rasool. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. And last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, we were very lucky that we've actually been joined by another Nath Khan as well. And he'll be rendering his services uh, towards the end of the program. His na name is Muhammad Akib Qadri. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. Wa alaikum assalam. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. So, sir, the question is same, which is asked. Hmm. Uh, what do you have to say about it? Don't you think uh, that our religion is complete and it tells us everything? Okay, before I start off exactly answering that question, I'll just start off that this is really, uh, we are living in a highly unprecedented time. And they, there's a, this uh, typical uh, phrase, uh, new norm. We are living in this new norm. For example, early in the morning I came. Mm. Uh, suddenly I just uh, looked at Shahzad. I came out and uh, internally what I was feeling uh, and my right hand, it was just moving. <laughs> and then suddenly I just uh, I looked at his face. Uh, I got done so very clear. So, I mean, this is what the new norm has started and we have got to properly adjust. And look, this Ramazan is very much different from rest of the Ramazan. Exactly. Of course. Why? Because uh, just see the enormous disruption in our lives and now the Ramazan has come and we have got to uh, see it. So uh, we can see that Islamic, uh, if we see the teaching of Holy Prophet, so it has got a complete mechanism if we uh, honestly study the whole mechanism to prevent these pandemics or to control these pandemics. So Holy Prophets uh, suggest uh, five different methods. Sir. Number one is <coughs> this uh, uh, travel bans and quarantine. Yes. So uh, there is this one hadith of uh, Holy Prophet as well, that if you hear of any uh, uh, outbreak, outbreak of any uh, uh, epidemic, uh, so you should not, uh, if you are uh, not 
uh, there so you should stay at your home second is that if you're living in in in, in, the, in the same area where this has broken out so you don't need to go out so this is what we have got now we can see it from data scientific point of view as well that we have got to avoid it so we have got very clearly in islam as well the second is isolation uh, we have got a holy prophet suggested on many occasion that if there is a sick person you should not place that sick person among the healthy people and this has this has gone to the the the, the, the it hasn't limited itself to only humans but uh, to the animals as well yeah. that do not uh, place any ill cattle among uh, the healthy cattle exactly. as well similarly we can see that uh, there was this one uh, 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 guy Uh, from Holy Prophet's era, and he was to pledge his allegiance uh, with the Holy Prophet. And that act was the requirement of that act was to just touch either Holy Prophet or just to uh, put his hand in his hand. But Holy Prophet, uh, knowing the importance of this isolation, uh, he uh, very uh, nicely said to that person to go back to his home, and he said, "Your pledge has been accepted." So this is like uh, second, third one is Islam also, and we just get a lot many. Uh, aspect from holy prophet's life as well it, it talks about hygiene so now we can see from last many weeks how we are washing our hands yeah. believe me in my life i <laughs> never washed my hand like this yeah, that's and true and now that's we true. are so clear so yeah. our religion always tells us so now this is the, the time where we have got to take care of ourselves we have got to take care of our family member and especially you know why do we need to take care of this thing still we have got people who are just to talk about uh, conspiracies theories and all that uh, we have got to see i mean certain pictures from social media where where i saw that a father was following his son uh, from a huge distance uh, whose son was having this uh, unfortunately uh, this uh, virus and there was a huge gap and he just see how he said goodbye to his son then i just saw a picture of like two young brother and sister I just imagine that I mean uh, me and uh, Shahzad we are married and we have got kids and inshallah Shiza is going to have very uh, soon and inshallah. we can exactly imagine the scenario that you know when you have got like uh, your son and daughter I'm going to sacrifice my life for them even if it's my parents ladies and gentlemen I'm with them no just imagine the scenario that unfortunately god forbid if they are going to get this so how we are going to survive how we will survive it i'm not we are going to say them goodbye where doctors are going to take them away from us we are not allowed to see them so that's why yeah. we have got to properly practice it as well then we have got like uh, fourth one is that we have got to properly go for this seeking the medical care still some people uh, think and they believe in this thing that well it is from almighty allah so we don't need to go uh, for any kind of but uh, we can see a lot many uh, teachings of holy prophet where uh, holy prophet strongly recommends once a group of bedouins uh, they came to holy prophet and said that uh, what if we have got a disease and we do not go for uh, any kind of treatment yeah. will it be considered a, a sin so holy prophet said that uh, you must go for this proper treatment uh, because oh slaves of allah uh, if allah has created any kind of disease so it has definitely provided uh, the cure for this exactly. as well yeah. and last but then the least that we have got to provide this free medical care and assistance and mm. right now it's happening uh, as already have said that this ramazan is very much different from previous ramazan because now i can see that there are people who, who were on daily wages exactly. in the in the previous ramazan they had every opportunity to earn money yeah. but now they are not allowed to go for their own like uh, chana charts pakoras and all that and similarly they've got other kinds of work as well so that's why we have got a complete mechanism of prevention of these infection in yeah. islam and if we properly follow it we are really going to control it and yeah. this is not only for us this is for other human beings as well thank you very much yeah, sir for making yeah. us aware of uh, all of this amazing information which we were actually blessed with in the name of our religion as well and it is beautiful but there's one more thing which i need to ask and that is that why do you think that it takes uh, 200 300 all over the world it's more than 150,000 or 200,000 people have died why do you think it takes us this long to understand uh the very morality the very reality of our religion and why do you think that you know after so long because there have been conversations on all over the tv channels people have been talking about it but nobody has given this point of view so i don't know what the reason might probably be but since we have this opportunity i'm going to take advantage of it why do you think we as humans uh it takes us so long to adopt to a practice which was given to us uh which was provided to us by our allah almighty and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam why do you think we have taken so long to understand the teachings of islam uh well i think 
we do not study deeply. Uh, I'm a Muslim because I was born we to my parents. Yes. And then uh, my parents sent me to the mosque. I went to recite the Holy Quran and I became a Muslim. I did not uh, study thoroughly. But when we properly prepare, since this is the, uh, our religion is basically very close to the nature. Yes. Mm. Uh, it, because it touches almost every aspect of the life. Right. Yes. So if we are going to do it, for example, one day I just came to know about this. Uh, like if a guest comes to you, believe me, I didn't know it. That, I mean, how to treat. Uh, wonderful. Similarly, I mean, whatever the aspect of life you are going to touch upon, uh, our religion is going to provide us with the complete SOPs. And all we need to do is research, research and study Absolutely. about it. Thank Absolutely. you very much, Asasa, for being with us. And you definitely gave us, you know, I think that, ladies and gentlemen, back in the days when we used to study in schools, you know, we used to get these key books as well, uh, for where you really didn't actually have to go through all the chapters. And if you go through the key, you know, you will know every result. So I think that that's something which we have provided us with in these times as well. And I think that it is for everybody to fo understand in the first place and then follow. But now very quickly towards the end of the program, ladies and gentlemen, as promised, we have uh, another North Khoa for uh, with us as well. And he's going to share an art. But very quickly, what we're going to do is that we're going to wrap up the show and then we'll throw it on to you and then you can share the nath with us. So ladies and gentlemen, please make sure if there's any pertinent question, relevant question uh, in context of Ramadan as well or otherwise, please make sure that you ask us, write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of? Well This Morning. On Twitter. Well This Morning without a G. On Daily Motion. It's Well This Morning. On YouTube. It's BTV World. So ladies and gentlemen, look after yourselves and Akib Sahib, over to you. جا زندگی مدینے سے جھوکے ہوا کے لا جا زندگی مدینے سے جھوکے ہوا کے لا شاید حضور ہم سے خفا ہے بنا کے لا شاید حضور ہم سے خفا ہے بنا کے لا کچھ ہم بھی اپنا چیرائے باطل سوار لے کچھ ہم بھی اپنا چیرائے باطل سوار لے ابو بکر سے کو چائنے عشق و وفا کے لا ابو بکر سے کو چائنے عشق و وفا کے لا باطل سے دب رہی ہے پھر امت حضور کی باطل سے دب رہی ہے پھر امت حضور کی منظر ذرا حسین سے کچھ کر بلا کے لا منظر ذرا حسین سے کچھ کر بلا کے لا مغرب میں مارا مارا نہ پھر اے گدا مغرب میں مارا مارا نہ پھر اے گدا اے 
दरवाजाए अली से ये खैरात जा के ला दरवाजाए अली से से ये खैरात जा के ला जा जिंदगी मदीन से energy we are all vibes we are all colors and we are all yes it's true i do pick up vibes coming back to you mm -mm. what is the question again <laughs> expectations and expectations and yeah. it's very hard not to have them but try to not be judgmental yeah. be more humane put yourself in the other person's shoes and and, uh, and that's, uh, that's great think. since we are running out of time but we really need to thank you thank you very much for taking our time and so coming much. over and sharing your idea of life with us it was wonderful to have you and please continue to do the excellent work you are doing ladies and gentlemen very quickly uh, it's a good day because she's a love today as well on the show but do write to us on our facebook fan page which is with the name of well this morning on twitter well this morning without a g thank on daily motion and youtube yes, oh it's you. it was such a pleasure wonderful oh thank you We need to give this time, man. She's speaking good about it. I know. Yeah. Isn't that <laughs> yeah, but thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure to catch the repeat at five past eleven p.m. tonight. Till the next time. Good morning and Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs>